I'm going to demonstrate the basic workflow of the MPC Touch. Let's start by creating a couple of programs to use. I will start by creating a drum program using samples. Remember I said that samples can either be recorded into your MPC or loaded from files already on your hard drive through your Touch's browser. I will demonstrate both methods, but first I'm going to record in a sample from my turntable, which I have connected to the two inputs on the back of the MPC Touch's audio interface. I've already adjusted the record volume knob to achieve the best signal to noise ratio for the audio input signal. So I'm going to touch the menu button here and then go to the sampler. Once in sample mode, I'm going to make sure that my input source is set to external left and right. So I'm going to double touch here and select external LNR. Beneath that, I'm also going to select the output menu and select the stereo output so it creates a stereo file. Stereo. The next thing I want to do is adjust my threshold. I can touch and drag my threshold up and down here, or I can double tap and do the same on a much larger fader with a higher resolution. Finally, I can use Q-Link 1 to adjust the threshold. And I'm going to set my threshold right around negative 12 dB. Once I arm the sampler, the MPC will automatically start recording once the input signal exceeds the threshold. This often makes editing the start of the sample easier. Next, I want to adjust the maximum length of the recording. So I'm going to tell the MPC Touch how long to sample. Right now it's set to 10 seconds. I'm going to set it to 1 minute and 10 seconds, which is more than enough time for the sample that I'm going to record in, and I'm going to use my Q-Link knobs to adjust that time. The first knob controls seconds. I'll leave that at 10. The second knob controls minutes. I'm going to set that at 1, so 1 minute, 10 seconds. Finally, I'm going to hit my monitor button so I can hear my source coming from my turntable through the MPC as I record it. So I'm going to go ahead and arm it, and as you can see it says waiting for signal. It is not recording, it's waiting for the signal to break the threshold. So now I have recorded the sample into the MPC and I have the option to go ahead and name it now. Now I usually name my samples based on the record that they came from or the artist that they came from in case the song gets placed and I have to clear it and all that information will be right in the name of the sample. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to tap on the keyboard and name this Touch Piano. And just like that, I've given the sample a name. I also have the ability to choose whether I want to put it in a program or not. So if I double touch here, I can say none, and then it won't be in a program. Or I can put it in the default program 001, which is the default program that's created when you don't have any other programs created. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it to program 001 so I can use it. And later I'll change the name so it makes sense. And I'm going to assign it to pad one and I'm going to say keep. Now if I go back to main you'll see that I'm in a sequence, an unused sequence with an unused track and if I look down here you'll see the program which is a drum program which is program 001 and if I press this my sample is there. So now that the sample is in the MPC, assigned to a pad, in a program, it's time to edit. Editing the sample allows you to only use the part you need and have the sample play from the position you want when you trigger it from a pad. I'm just going to do a very simple edit at the beginning and end of this sample in this video since this is a basic workflow tutorial. So what I'm going to do is hit menu and go to sample edit. 
So now I'm in sample edit mode. Because I currently only have one sample loaded into my MPC, it automatically shows that sample to edit. Now, if there were multiple samples loaded, I would first tap the pad of the sample that I would like to edit and then go into edit mode. Or if I was already in sample edit mode, I could double tap on the sample menu and select a sample from a list here. As you can see, there's only the touch piano or none. Let me go back to touch piano. Alternatively, I could just select that menu and use my data dial to turn and select the sample if I had more. So I'll leave it on touch piano because it's the only sample here and it's what I want to edit. The pads in sample edit mode trigger the sample in different ways and from different locations. You can see what each pad's function is from the software. I'm going to zoom in to the beginning of the sample with my fingers on the touch screen and edit the beginning of the sample to where I want it to start. Now before I do that, it's important that I make sure that I'm in trim mode and not chop mode. So when I touch here, you'll see that I'm in chop mode and when I touch again, I'm back in trim mode. So on these tabs at the bottom of the screen, if you notice that it has these little boxes on it, that means it has multiple options. If there are two boxes, there are two options. If there are three boxes, there are three options. Here, you have the choice of trim or chop. I want to be in trim. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make sure that I'm in zoom and not in play. If I have the headphone selected and I touch, it'll play back every time I touch it. So I'm going to go back here to zoom. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to scroll till I see this green S. That green S represents the start of the sample and allows me to trim the start point. So if I touch that and drag it, I can set the start point exactly where I want the sample to start. Now I can be very precise on my edit by zooming in more and then scrolling and adjusting the start point even more. If you want to hear your edit position while you're editing, you can touch this gear and make sure that slice preview is on. And now when I edit, you will hear that. For teaching purposes in this tutorial, it often gets in the way of what I'm trying to say, so I'm going to turn it off. Now, once I zoom in, I can make a more precise edit. And I can also use the Q-Link knobs in the first column to edit the start of the sample at varying resolutions. From very coarse with the first Q-Link knob to very fine with the bottom. So if I turn this first knob, you see it makes really big edits. And if I turn one of these lower knobs, it makes more precise edits. So I'm going to zoom back out now. And I'm going to edit the end of the sample. So I'm going to scroll down here. This red E represents the end of the sample or where I want my edit to end. So I'm going to drag that to about here. Zoom back out a little bit. And now I'm going to trigger a different pad. I'm going to hit this pad right here and it's going to play my sample from its end point right here. So I'm trying to get it to end right at that downbeat. So I'm going to go into the second column of Q-Link knobs and use those knobs to adjust my endpoint. I'm going to try one of these lower knobs to get a little bit more detail. So I think I got it just about right. There's a four bar loop in here I want to use. And the way I'm going to test it, I'm going to hit this pad and that pad will play a loop from the start to the end of my sample edit. And that will let me know. That sounds pretty good. A lot of times after I edit a sample, I will go into process and say discard. And what Discard does, it eliminates any excess audio before the start of the sample and after the end of the sample. I'm not going to do that this time because I'm going to use part of the end of the sample later on in this tutorial. <laughs> 